Hello everyone, this is topic 3.4 Ideal Gas Law. This has been taken from AP Chemistry College Board. In this video, I'll be talking about all the laws which led to ideal gas law. And with the help of this law, we can calculate different parameters for a gas. Let's start from the Boyle's law. According to this law, at constant temperature, the pressure of a fixed amount of gas varies inversely with the volume of the gas. So in this definition, the temperature is constant and the amount of gas is constant. Only the pressure and the volume of the gas are varying. Here you can see a container in which there is a gas. The amount of gas is constant and the temperature is also constant. Initially, the pressure was 1 and the volume was around 4. Some weights were put on it. This means that the pressure was increased. So here you can see that the pressure has increased from 1 to 2 and the gas got compressed. The volume changed from around 4 to 2. So the volume decreased. Here you can see a graph in which the pressure versus volume is drawn. Initially, the volume was more and the pressure was less, but the pressure increased and the volume decreased. So the relation will be P is inversely proportional to volume and PV is equal to constant. So for any expansion or compression of a gas, P1, V1 equal to P2, V2, where P1, V1 are the parameters for the gas at initial conditions and P2, V2 are the parameters for the gas at final condition. Let's see an example related to this formula. The pressure of gas A is 3.0 atmosphere when it occupies 5 liter of the volume. Calculate the final pressure when it is compressed to 3 liter volume at constant temperature. So initial conditions are V1 equal to 5 liter and P1 equal to 3.0 atmosphere. In final condition, V2 is 3 liter and P2 we need to calculate. We will put these values in this formula that is P1 V1 equal to P2 V2. So we can calculate P2 from here and we will get 5 atmosphere. You need to keep one thing in mind that the unit should be same in initial and final conditions. So that is why the P2 which we calculated is also in atmosphere. The next law is Charles law. According to this law, the volume occupied by a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas at constant pressure. Here, the mass of the gas is kept constant and the pressure is kept constant. Initially, the volume was 10 mm cube and the temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. But temperature was increased by heating the container and you can see that as the temperature was increased, the volume also increased. At 51 degrees Celsius, the volume became 11 mm cube. So, volume is directly proportional to temperature at constant pressure and the number of moles of gas. So, from here, V upon T would be constant and V1 over T1 would be equal to V2 over T2. This is the graphical representation of the Charles law. The plot is linear between the volume and temperature. To get the volume at 0 Kelvin, we will extrapolate this graph. The 0 Kelvin is equal to minus 273.16 degree Celsius. In this graph, there is a comparison between the pressures also. So at lower pressure, the graph would be higher and for higher pressure, the slope would be lower. And at 0 Kelvin temperature, the volume would also be 0. The example for the Charles law is at what temperature will a given mass of a gas occupy a volume of 200 liter if it occupies a volume of 260 liter at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, pressure remaining constant. Initial conditions are V1 would be 200 liter and T1 we need to calculate. In the final condition, V2 is 260 liter, temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, so we will convert this Celsius into Kelvin, it became 303 Kelvin. We will put these values in V1 over T1 equal to V2 over T2 and we will calculate the T1 as 233 Kelvin. The third law is gale lussac law. According to this law, at constant volume, the pressure of a fixed amount of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature. So here, the volume and the amount of gas is kept constant. Only the pressure and the temperature are varying. Here, initially, when there was an ice cube, the pressure was lower for the gas. But when it was replaced with a burner, the pressure increased. So pressure is directly proportional to temperature at constant volume at number of moles of gas. So P over T is constant and P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. This is the graphical representation of the Gay-Lussac's law. The 
graph is plotted between pressure and temperature which is in Kelvin. The pressure was directly proportional to temperature so there is a linear slope and at lesser volume the graph would be higher and for higher volume the graph would be lower and to get the value of pressure at 0 Kelvin we will extrapolate the graph and we will see that at 0 Kelvin that is at absolute temperature the pressure would also be 0. The cylinder of propane gas at 25 degrees Celsius exerted a pressure of 10 atmosphere. When exposed to sunlight it warmed up to 45 degrees Celsius. What pressure does the container now experience? Initial conditions are pressure P1 is 10 atmosphere and T1 is 298 Kelvin. At final condition, we need to calculate the P2 and the temperature given is 318 Kelvin. So we will put these values and we will calculate the P2 as 10.67 atmosphere. Next law is Avogadro's law. According to this law, the equal volume of all gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure contain equal number of moles or molecules. So the temperature and pressure are kept constant. Here in this balloon, when the amount of gas is less, the volume was also less. But when we will fill this balloon with more amount of gas, the volume would also increase. So the volume is directly proportional to the number of moles of gas. And V over N would be constant where V1 over N1 would be equal to V2 over N2. So mathematically, one mole of an ideal gas occupies 22.4 liter of volume at STP. Where STP is the standard temperature and pressure, the temperature is 0 degree Celsius which is 273.15 Kelvin and the pressure is 10 to the power 5 Pascals or we can say 1 bar. At STP, the volume occupied by gas would be equal to 22.4 multiplied by the number of moles of the gas. This is the graphical representation of the Avogadro's law. There will be a linear slope between the volume and the number of moles. As the number of moles are increasing, the volume of the gas is also increasing. When all the laws, Boyle's law, Charles' law, Gay-Lussac's law, and the Avogadro's law were combined, a different relationship was obtained, which was volume is proportional to N T over P. And by removing this proportionality, the ideal gas equation was obtained, which was P V is equal to N R T, where P is the pressure of the gas, V is the volume of the gas, N is the number of moles of gas, R is the proportionality constant, and T is the temperature of the gas. So this equation is called as the ideal gas equation and this equation is valid for the hypothetical gases under all temperature and pressure. The gases show ideal behavior at low pressure and high temperature. What is this proportionality constant or gas constant? The value of this constant is 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. 1.987 calorie per mole Kelvin. So you need to remember these values along with its units so that we can apply this in the problems related to the ideal gas equation. Let's see an example. A vessel of 5 liter capacity maintained at 27 degrees Celsius was filled with 0.5 mole of oxygen gas. Calculate the pressure of the gas in atmospheres in container. So the volume is given temperature is given, the number of moles of gas is given. We need to find the pressure of the gas. We will apply the ideal gas law. The temperature is in degree Celsius, so we will convert that into Kelvin. So the temperature is in Kelvin, volume is in liter and number of moles is in moles. So the units of R we will take in liter atmosphere per mole per Kelvin. The value would be 0.082. We will put these values to calculate the pressure by using the formula PV is equal to NRT. We will get the pressure as 2.46 atmosphere. Now let's see the Dalton's law of partial pressure. This law deals with the mixture of different gases but which are non-reactive. So according to this law, the total pressure exerted by the mixture of non-reactive gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases. 
For example, in a container, if we have a gas whose pressure is P1, then there is another container in which there is another gas with a pressure P2. When these two gases are combined, the total pressure would be equal to P1 plus P2. According to Dalton's law, P total is equal to P1 plus P2. Now, according to ideal gas law, we know that PV is equal to NRT. So, P would be equal to NRT over V. We will substitute this pressure with NRT over V. So, this will be equal to N1 RT over V plus N2 RT over V. We will take out N1 plus N2 as common. Uh, so, it would be N1 plus N2 RT over V. Now, if we want to take the fraction of P1 over P total, it would be N1 RT over V upon N1 plus N2 RT over V. RT over V would cancel and we will be left with N1 over N1 plus N2. So, N1 plus N2 is the total number of moles. So, we can write it as N. So, we will be left with N1 over N. N1 is the number of moles of gas 1 and N is the total number of moles. So, this fraction is equal to mole fraction. That is written as X1. When we will arrange this equation, we will get as P1 is equal to X1 P total. So, if we want to calculate the pressure of one gas in the mixture, it would be equal to mole fraction of that gas multiplied by the total pressure of the gas. Let's see an example related to Dalton's law. A neon dioxygen mixture contains 70.6 gram dioxygen and 167.5 gram neon. If pressure of the mixture of gases in the cylinder is 25 bar, what is the partial pressure of dioxygen and neon in the mixture? So in this question, we know that there is a mixture of neon and dioxygen whose masses are given that is 70.6 gram dioxygen and 167.5 gram neon is present. The total pressure is given that is 25 bar. We need to find the partial pressure of both the gases. We know for the dioxygen, the mass is 70.6 grams and the molar mass for the dioxygen is 32 gram per mole. So the moles of dioxygen would be mass upon molar mass. So that would be 2.206 moles. Similarly, we will calculate for neon. It would be 8.375 moles. So the total number of moles would be moles of oxygen plus moles of neon. We will get the answer is 10.581 moles. So from this, we can calculate the mole fraction of dioxygen as well as mole fraction of neon. Mole fraction of dioxygen would be number of moles of oxygen upon total number of moles. So that would be 0.208. If we want to calculate the mole fraction of neon, we can calculate it from here also that the moles of neon upon total number of moles and we can also do it as 1 minus this because the total number of moles in any mixture would be equal to 1. So that would be 1 minus 0.208. So, we will get it as 0.792. Now, we know the mole fractions of both oxygen and neon. We know the total pressure of the gas. So, we can calculate the partial pressure of oxygen by multiplying the mole fraction of oxygen and the total pressure. So, we will get the answer as 5.2 bar. Similarly, for neon, we will get it as 19.8 bar. The learning objective of the topic was explain the relationship between the macroscopic properties of a sample of gas or mixture of gases using the ideal gas law. Here we saw different laws which led to the ideal gas law. In ideal gas law, there were macroscopic properties like pressure, volume, temperature, number of moles of gas. And we also related that ideal gas law with the mixture of gases with the Dalton's law. Please like and subscribe to the channel Log IOTA and press the bell icon.